Hey guys, it's Stephen here, the Mad Doc, with a quick look at my uh, latest project, which I'm going to be uh, getting to work on shortly. This is uh, the uh, Contempt of Dreadnought from Forge World, and uh, I've just got the pieces out, got them organized, cleaned up a little bit, and uh, done a few mods, and I'll just show you how this is uh, going to go together, just as a uh, primer. So uh, let's get started with the uh, the pieces that we've got. Got the uh, the main torso piece there. I decided to go with the uh, the basic Contemptor Dreadnought body rather than the Relic uh, Contemptor. I just uh, like the the smooth lines a little bit more. So we have the uh, the power plant and the uh, the main body which go together. Nothing surprising there. The head which is. Uh, like a uh, modeled like a space marine helmet I guess and that will go into the recess here and you have an option as to uh, how you're going to turn it for those uh, menacing poses uh, there were no instructions with this model so it's a little bit of um, testing and a bit of research to see how it all goes together so I'll, I'll go over the uh, the trickier points uh, because uh, you know the last thing you want to do is to put something together wrong and, and have it hinder the uh, the posing of the model or you know have the uh, the fits wrong so that's mainly in the leg sections uh, for the most part so what I've got here is the uh, the two two bits of the torso you've got the hips and the uh, the ab area and they're going to go together into the uh, the cavity there so this top part is going to be glued in there, I'm going to have that as a solid solid piece. But what I've done already is I have drilled this section out and I've glued a bit of brass rod into here. So when that's together, you'll still get the waist swivel. So you'll be able to give it a more dynamic pose or just keep it loose and uh, swivel it around on the table as you prefer. So that's that part there. Now the uh, the leg sections. So here we have the upper thigh and you can see it's got the ball joint and the armor casing over the top. It's symmetrical except it's got this little divot, this little uh, block piece at the back and that's going to be going into the, the hip joint like that with this little block at the back. And that's going to connect to the leg housing. Um, now, again, there weren't any instructions, and this is largely symmetrical, uh, except according to the Forge World pictures, if you were looking at the left leg, then this piece will be facing this way. You can see it's got the line and the, the little square there, and the square will be facing towards the outside. And that's going to pop into here, and the way that the block is set up here is it restricts the movement so if you have it this way you can get a full range of movement 90 degree at the uh, the knee but it blocks forward rotation which you would, you would sort of expect from a bipedal humanoid so that's going to be facing that way with the block at the back and that's going to lock the, the leg there and then the knee pad is just going to slot into that gap and uh, you have everything sorry my fingers are all in the way have everything locked in like that and uh, you're not going to get forward motion there but you get it a solid back rotation so that was uh, just something that took me a little bit of time and I just thought I'd show off there then of course you have the uh, the feet and these have fortunately been marked L1, R2 and there's also L2 and R1 uh, depending on how you'd like to pose it and that's just going to sit in the, the foot and there's a, a ball socket there which you can sort of rotate things around for a bit of bit of play if you want some subtle posing that's uh, that's already there. We've got the flat foot, just sits firmly, and then you've got the option of a slightly arched foot. 
the front is just very slightly arched so that it gives more of a walking pose or a, a striding forward pose. So uh, yeah, that's uh, just something I wanted to show off because it took me a little bit of bit of time just to uh, figure out exactly how all those components went together. Um, the weapon options I've gone with on this are the Kerry's auto cannon, uh, assault cannon rather, and a uh, <clears throat> power fist. I haven't assembled the power fist yet. I still want to decide which uh, weapon options I want on that: the storm bolter or the uh, flamer. Um, and I want to figure out whether it's going to be possible to have, you know, uh, poseable fingers or anything like that. <clears throat> but uh, with the uh, assault cannon, basically the arm structures go together just like a, a ball socket in there, so you can, you know, get uh, a subtlety of, of posing however you want that. And then the rest of the arm is going to slot into that area there. So I've already done some assembling on the assault cannon itself. Uh, I've drilled out the uh, cannon barrels. So how we've got this is it's a uh, just a slot there, and you have the upper arm which goes into there, which allows a bit of uh, movement for posing. What you could do if you wanted to would be to drill out this uh, centerpiece here and put a, a pin through there if you wanted to keep this uh, flexible. I don't think I'm going to bother with that. I think I'm just going to have it uh, just glued in a, a good pose. But the upper arm section, what I've done is I have magnetized this like so. Two magnets, very strong, very secure. And uh, what that's going to mean is when these sections are together like that, this upper part is going to be glued, or, or you could magnetize it or pin it or whatever just so that, that part comes out. But if you want different weapon options, the plan is that this part will come apart uh, and be magnetized. So if you want to swap out for las cannons or plasma cannon or multi melter or whatever you want, what other um, options you've got, you'll be able to do that. And I'll do that on the uh, the other side also with the uh, the fist as it has the uh, the same sort of sort of joint set up rotationally there. And then I can put a magnet in there and this top part will slide on and then go into the arm piece like that. And then of course you have your uh, your housing for the uh, fingers and uh, weapon options like that. So it's largely just the parts cleaned up and uh, ready to go. Now uh, the next next part will probably be um, some undercoating, some gluing together, some undercoating, and uh, getting it set up on a uh, on a a pose that I would quite like might have it on like a, a striding forward pose or or standing, you know, leaning up on a on a block of, of some description, uh, crushing through some uh, some terrain or some rubble, things of that nature to make it more uh, more cinematic dyna uh, dynamic. But yeah, uh, so far everything's gone together quite nicely. Just the the usual issues with dealing with resin. Um, the flashing and all that sort of thing, um, but by and large it's been pretty good. Uh, again, just the only stumbling block was, you know, the orientation of uh, some of the bits, like the the legs, as I showed. And uh, yeah, um, it doesn't seem to to be a very complicated build beyond that. I think it shouldn't take me too long to get done. But I just wanted to uh, start this off just to show the components and uh, what sort of mods I've done already. So anyway, I'm going to get cracking on with that, and I'll see you guys in the next vid. Cheers.